just had awesome praise and worship. We were having camera problems, but during praise and worship and, and prayer, our media team praying over our camera, it came back to life. So I hope that everybody that's watching online can actually see me and hear me right now. Uh, so we should be up on Subsplash, yes. Facebook, and YouTube. And uh, we just want to welcome you to our Sunday evening service. We have an evening service that starts at 5 p.m. And we worship and praise until 5.30. And then at 5.30 we go online with uh, a, a few announcements with our tithes and offerings and then right into the Word of God. Amen. So we just want to welcome everybody. And we are going to go to 2 Corinthians. So if you have your Bibles, your smartphones with the Bible on it, Amen. Uh, go to 2 Corinthians, and we are going to go to a very familiar passage, but every now and then I like to go back to the familiar passages, and we're going to go to chapter 9, and now we're going to go, we're going to start with verse 1, just real, real quick, because I want to go through uh, what Paul is talking about here to the Corinthian church. Now concerning the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you, for I know your willingness about which I boast of you to the Macedonians, that Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal has stirred up the majority. Yet I have sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this respect, that as I said, you may be ready. Again, he's talking about to the Corinthians, that you may be ready. Ready for what? Well, let's read on. Verse 4. Lest if some Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, we, not to mention you, should be ashamed of this confident boasting. So there's been a lot of boasting going on. So it would be a shame for the visitors, the Macedonians, to come to Corinth and, and meet the Corinthians and the Corinthians not be prepared. Well, prepared for what? Well, let's read on. Verse 5. Therefore I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren and the sisterin to go to you ahead of time and prepare your generous gift beforehand, which you had previously promised, that it may be ready as a matter of generosity and not as a grudging obligation. So he's speaking of a gift, gifts that should be ready ahead of time as they come together uh, with Paul to hear the message. He's about to give them a message. He's a, he's a pastor. He's about to give them a sermon. So the Macedonians and Corinthians are coming together. Go to verse 6. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he, he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly, or of necessity for God loves a cheerful giver so again he wanted to make sure that the Corinthians came prepared they came ahead of time with their gifts they didn't forget their gifts they came to church with their gifts and they're also going to be cheerful givers and pre and think about ahead of time what your gifts gonna be so that you're not emotionally charged, uh -huh. that you're giving out of your heart, you're giving out of obedience to what the Word of God says are your first fruits. Mm -hmm. Because we in this church have learned and we know what our first fruits are, so we don't have to get a sermon to work us up and get us emotionally charged mm -hmm. to keep giving or to keep giving more. So we come ahead of time prepared to give our first fruits, and then we know anything above that is an offering. And the blessing comes from obviously your obedience, but the offering is where you get your 30, 60, 100 fold blessing on top of the offering. So we want you to come ahead of time. If you're giving online, think about your gift ahead of time and then pray about it, pray over your gift, and then give it with cheerfulness. Don't give it grudgingly because then you lose the reward from heaven when you do things grudgingly or with a bad attitude. So that was our scriptures for our tithes and offerings. Amen. And now we are going to read our proclamation. Anybody that would like to read it with us, we're going to put our hands on our heart and we're going to believe the words that we are speaking out of our mouths. Repeat after me. We are believing the Lord for. We are believing the Lord 
Jobs and better jobs. Jobs and better jobs. Raises and bonuses. Raises and bonuses. Opportunities and benefits. Opportunities and benefits. Opportunities and benefits. Sales and commissions. Sales and commissions. Skills and abilities. Skills and abilities. Plans and designs. Plans and designs. Favorable settlements. Favorable settlements. Land and real estate. Land and real estate. Finding and receiving money. Finding and receiving money. Wisdom and prosperity. Wisdom and prosperity. Health and strength. Health and strength. Blessings and increase. Blessings and increase. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That I may have more than enough. That I may have more than enough. To give into the kingdom of God. And to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, Pastor Chicota is bringing your word, the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. You're going to pray over our offerings. Amen. 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 If you believe God uh, is faithful, <laughs> and if you believe that God says that you can't outgive Him, mm. bow your heads and just, just pray. Whatever needs you have right now, Father, I thank you as we pray over the offering, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that every need is met for those who are in this house, those who are watching online, Father, whether it be financially, whether it be physically, emotionally, physically, whatever it may be, Lord, we know that you're God that hears our prayer. <coughs> Lord, let there be healing in some homes right now, Father, where there's anger and frustration. Let there be, Father, healing in some homes where there's sickness and diagnosis that, Father, that are fatal. Let there be healing, Father, amongst friends who have parted because of disagreements. Lord, I pray, Father, not just for financial seeds, but other seeds, Lord God. Let people, Father, not lose heart in these last times as they sow, knowing that every need that they have, you are a supplier of every need, if we could only believe. I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. I believe God and Without God, I know that my life would be nothing. Without God, I realize that my life would be empty. Um, I was really blessed earlier, and I'm, I'm, I don't want to get emotional. I'm trying not to. All of, just, all of a sudden, it just comes up on me. Um, Michael came in, and he hugged me like all of you guys do. Y'all all hug me. I love that. We're a hugging church. We're about the huggingest church I've ever been a part of. And I love that. And uh, we all greet each other with a holy kiss. We're respectful. To each other but Michael came up and hugged me today and he just wouldn't let me go and it's just like I could feel that love I want you to know it just just it just really blessed me I mean he hugged me every Sunday but today there was just such an anointing on that I just wanted to let you know uh, sometimes we don't know what people are going through and sometimes they don't need a card that you're gonna throw away eventually <laughs> you know I just pastors don't do cards they just, they just collect dust but, you know, sometimes you never know. That hug that you give somebody is more than gold. That hug, you know, just coming up and just giving somebody a hug, just saying, you know what? I feel upon my heart. And I'm talking about being led by the Spirit, not being led by your flesh. But being led by the Spirit and saying, you know what? I just want to hug you. I just want to tell you. I was at the park one day and, and I was sitting there just kind of meditating in my thoughts and this guy who probably in the natural probably wouldn't even spoke to me but he ran by me and then he stopped and backed up and I was just sitting there thinking and he goes hey man he didn't know who I was from Adam he didn't know I was your pastor he didn't know anything about me he goes man I just want to tell you something because I was dealing with some stuff he, he stopped complete stranger he said man I just want to tell you that God loves you wow. that Jesus told me to tell you he loves you and he said, I don't know what that means to you. And I said, it means more than you could ever imagine. And he said, okay. I just want to tell you that he loves you. And he kept going. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So amen. if you, amen, listen to me. We are on the winning side. Yes. We win in the end. The, if the game is fixed, <laughs> but it's fixed, we win. You know, we win. And so the amen. thing is that what we have to realize that we have to make sure that we take off and keep our heads focused on the prize. You know, we have to go through things in this life, you know, and it's the life can be good, bad, and ugly. We have to go through it. But the fact is that we have to go through it. You know, I'm gonna give you scripture today. The Bible says that all who desire to live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. 
to understand that I read today and we've talked about before the Bible talks about the Bible says woe unto you when everybody speaks well of you because you don't cause any controversy you know what you can't agree with everybody you can't just try to make everybody happy you have to take a stand for righteousness you have to take a stand for justice. You have to be dogmatic in what you believe. We've talked about that before. When everybody says, oh, they're so sweet. They just, they just, oh, they just get along with everybody. Something's wrong. <laughs> Seriously, something's wrong. I don't want people to say that about me. I'm not trying to make enemies. I don't go around trying to make enemies. But let me tell you something. God came into this world to bring light into the world right he did not come here to make enemies he came to the bible says jesus said i came to bring a sword i came to make a man choose the bible says the man's enemies will be upon his own household because there are people who are going to believe in your house and there are people who are not going to believe in your house so you have to understand have you got your eyes on the prize are you focused and determined from going to heaven are you, are you, can, can, can somebody persuade you to give up eternity? No. no. Don't. Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the way. So, I am thanking God uh, for, for those who don't know before I have you turn the scriptures, the title of my message, the kingdom of heaven. Uh, next Sunday, next Sunday, uh, uh, pastor, I call him Pastor Murphy because I believe that one day he is going to be a, a great pastor of a church. And uh, Alex was a part of our church for quite a long time. And uh, I miss him. I talk to him often. I probably talk to him more now than I did when he was here. Uh, he is very consistent in calling me. And our conversations can go from 30 minutes to a couple of hours because he always has a list. He's always prepared. And I love that. He's, uh, he's going to be here next Sunday. Amen. He's going to be here. Miss Sarah going to be here next Sunday. Amen. So he is going to be bringing the word next Sunday. So uh, tell everybody that knows anything about Alex, try to bring somebody. Amen. Let's fill this house. Amen. Uh, I want to be packed while he's here. So uh, he's going to be here next Sunday. So make sure you don't miss. Amen. All right. Amen. So keep him in prayer. Him and Sarah. They're enjoying family uh, up in Houston or Dallas or wherever he is right now. And uh, if he's watching, and uh, praise the Lord, preacher, we're excited about the word of God that you're going to bring. And uh, know that God has given you a word to encourage us and challenge us. Amen? Amen. All right, turn your Bibles to Matthew, Matthew chapter 16. What is the title of my message? What is the title of my message? Amen. Pastor Melissa is the only one taking notes. The kingdom of heaven. Listen, God talked about heaven. He talked about, the Bible says there's two, there's two heavens. Now, the kingdom of heaven is where you're going, Jaden is reading. Okay. The kingdom of heaven is where you are going. The kingdom of God, there's the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. There's a difference. The kingdom of God is within you. Okay? It is in your mouth, it is in your heart, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is the place that we are destined to live throughout eternity. Now, God has promised you the kingdom of heaven, but the only way that you can get there is through faith. The enemy wants to take away your destiny. Amen? And so, listen, I'm going to give you examples of those who have determined in themselves, no matter what, though they be cut in half, Though they be beheaded, though they be persecuted, they got in their heads that nothing on this earth would stop them from going to the kingdom of heaven. Amen? So Matthew chapter 16, starting at verse number 13. This is a very familiar scripture, but I'm going to bring out some different points that I haven't brought out before. Starting in Matthew chapter 16, starting at verse 13, Jaden. Verse 13. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? God! I can start right there. I love that scripture. Because you have to determine in yourself. Now, we know that Jesus has sent the disciples out. Background for those who haven't been a part of this church. Because this church has heard this scripture a lot of times. The disciples went out with the power of the Holy Ghost to lay hands on the sick. Judas was amongst them. 
Everybody say Judas was amongst them. Judas was amongst them. That means praise God. Listen closely. Amen. I interpret my own. Amen. Listen to me. This this is one of the most powerful messages that God has given me in such a long time. I kept writing and I couldn't stop writing. I could I just write, I'm just writing and writing. And Pastor Wilson said, you gotta stop. I can't stop. Because Dre always tells me, I always say I was sort of part A, part B say, I gotta pull your coattail. Because every time you say that, you go no. I, but today, there is gonna be a part A and a part B to this. Part one and a part two. Who do men say that I am? After they had cast out devils, after they had laid hands on the sick, after they had done many wonderful works, Judas was amongst them. He had the power of the Holy Spirit to lay hands on devils, cast out devils, they lay hands on the sick. Amen? Amen. When they came back, the disciples were rejoicing. They were celebrating. Woo! We are bad scooters. We can cast out devils. You see me make that person flop and that devil came out. Woo! <laughs> they were bad. They were some bad dudes. Amen? And Jesus is watching them and he stops them and he says, who do men say that I am? And they begin to go on, Jaden. Go ahead, verse number 14. Oh, 14. 14. 14. So he said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah are one of the prophets. Mm -hmm. He says that, but who do you say that I am? That's important. It doesn't matter what other people say. Who do you say that I am? You've been with me. You have seen the miracles. You have seen all the things that the other prophets have testified and said what happened. They've seen it. He asked them a good question. Very simple. Okay. The people. Okay. One of the prophets. They've listened. Some of them have been in church. John the Baptist. Ha. Maybe he, you're, he's risen. He was beheaded. You're like John the Baptist. Risen. Elijah came back. Remember? Who appeared to Jesus on the Mount of Tra Transfiguration? Moses and Elijah. Right. All right. He says, who do men say that I am? They say one of the prophets. Who do you say I am? They all get quiet. Silence. Verse number 15. 16. 16. Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Verse 17. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Hmm. Okay, here's key. I got something there. This is good. <laughs> there are things that people read that they don't understand. They can study the scriptures for years and years, and they can get degrees in theology. They can get degrees upon degrees and never, never understand the scriptures. Jesus said it. They are forever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Jesus told the Pharisees, he says, you study the scriptures daily. They were daily. We ain't trying to get people just to study them a couple hours a week. They study daily. And he said, they are the ones that testify of me. But yet, they even, even though they had head knowledge, they had no spiritual knowledge because they had Jesus over to punch his pilot to crucify him. Just because you got a degree in your name and you got it from theology school such and such doesn't mean you know God. Because let me tell you something church, without the Holy Spirit, you can't understand the things of God. Because without it, you are thinking carnally instead of spiritual. So that's why some people, they don't understand why y'all are here in this little bitty house going to church. They don't understand why you take off and come here on Sundays. They don't understand why you pray and don't freak out. They don't understand why you read that scripture. They don't understand why you lift your hands as a surrender to God. They don't understand. I believe in God. Really? I didn't know that. Oh yes, I have a strong belief, brother. <laughs> Listen, to understand something, a tree is known by its what? Bruce. Oh, okay. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, in verse 17, and answered, said unto him, Blessed are thy Simon Barjona. Flesh and blood had not revealed this unto you, but my Father, which is in heaven. Verse 18, Jaden. 
And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Will not! It didn't say that it wouldn't come against it. It said it wouldn't prevail against it. It wouldn't win. Because mm -hmm. let me tell you something. A couple of months ago, they unleashed the gates of hell against the church. Church doors were closed. Church doors were closed. There are still certain churches that demand that their, 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 their members take the... What happened to faith? I'm not against the, if you want. <laughs> but it's not, it's by choice. That I believe that by his stripes, I'm healed. And let me tell you something, that faith has been proven because I've seen people catch it and have the three or four times and they got it. And yet they said, well, you're being arrogant. No, I'm not being arrogant. I'm being confident in the word of God. He told me that he would keep me from plagues and pestilence. God did not give us life to take it from us because of a virus throughout history. Now, let me tell y'all something. They are coming out with a new virus. It's called the monkey virus. Monkey pox. Listen, listen, it's real. Listen, no, no. It's a monkey pox. Listen to me. Listen, you got to understand, I don't care if it's the chicken pox, I don't care if it's the cow pox, I don't care if it's corn pox, I don't care what it is, that if you believe God, you are vaccinated by all the pox. Amen. Guys, you got to have some faith in what you believe. Amen. Either you believe God, that he is a God that heals you, or then guess what? We'll all be walking around here every time they want us to, we be getting five and six and seven and eight and nine. Listen, I believe God. Amen. My faith is in God. And listen to me. Here's the deal. Here's the deal, y'all. If we stop breathing, God said I, God came to give us life, right? We ain't trying to end our lives short. It, suicide is not of God. We know that because Satan tried to tempt Jesus to do that, right? Suicide is not of God. But let me tell you something. If my heart stops beating, i got the confidence that I leave this life into the next. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. Then when you believe that heaven is your destiny, that life on this earth is temporary, then guess what? God, they may come against us, but upon this rock, which you are part of the church that Jesus was talking about, he says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it that's how you pray that's how you pray you said lord i'm a part of the church that you has established with peter called the rock and you said that the church the gates of hell shall not prevail against amen are you a part of the church amen and that's like it amen. and i say unto thee thou art peter the rock I will build my church in the gates of hell, shall not prevail against it. Verse 19. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Ah! Whatever you bind on earth, be Look at you. Whatever you Go ahead, Jay, keep going. Jay, like you're trying to Good job. Good job. You've been listening to Pastor Melissa. Read it again. Verse 19. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of Stop. heaven. Stop. I will give you the keys of what? The kingdom of heaven. What's the title of my message? Kingdom, kingdom of heaven. heaven. I will give you the keys. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, right? Mm -hmm. What are the keys? Knowledge, insight, direction. <laughs> Ain't like a real key. <laughs> this key don't work. <laughs> I got the wrong one. Listen, insight, knowledge, direction, faith. faith. That's the keys. You got to have the right keys mm -hmm. to unlock the door. Amen. Okay, Jaden, I need to stop you again. Read 19 again for me. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Go ahead. Verse 20. I would stop there, but since I'm going to do part two and part three, because I would have stopped there, but you've got to hear the rest of this because it's vital. Because once you get the keys, 
you've got to realize you've got to maintain that. Okay? That's why the Bible says study to what? Show yourself approved unto God. You've got to understand you've got to exercise your faith. Because once God gives you the keys, the object, the, the devil's objective is to take away the keys. Now Peter, who just spoke by the power of God, yes? Amen. Amen. When everybody else was silent, come on, y'all have heard this message before. Amen. But he stayed, he spoke up. But see, the problem is, the Bible says if you don't guard your heart, the Bible says immediately once the word is sown, if you don't stand on that word, the enemy comes and tries to snatch away. Yes. So immediately, after Peter just spoke up and Jesus just put him front and center, you my rock. What does the enemy do? Next verse. Verse 1. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. Keep it to yourself. Now he just told them. Okay, go on. Verse 21. From that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders, the chief priests, and scribes, and be killed and be raised the third day. Was it clear yes. what his yes. what his purpose on the earth yes. was? Very this is clear. way before he was crucified, guys. Yeah. He made it very clear to them. They should have understood it. They should have understood it. They should have understood the mission. They should have known that he was only going to be there a short time. Okay? We're only here a short time. And I mean, I can preach, 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 preach. But listen to me. You've got to get it and you've got to hold on to it because we only have a short time left, guys. Listen, there's got to be a change in you. There's got to be a change every day in you. I, uh, talking to Shur earlier, and I heard her say this, which is true. We're, none of us are perfect. Okay, and guys, that word perfect has been so misinterpreted, it makes me want to vomit. Okay, it makes me want to vomit, throw up. It does not mean without fault. Well, none of us are perfect, Pastor. I've heard that. Oh my God, we're not perfect. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Trust me, I know that. But listen to me. That does not mean without. It's talking about maturity. Okay? We're in spiritual maturity. Okay? So when it, you talk about mistakes because you're not perfect, well, if you keep making that same mistake, there is a spiritual childness in you, adolescent, that when you're an adult, you're still acting like a child. And you've got to grow. The word should make you grow. I get it. We do make mistakes. Trust me. We can make some stupid, immature mistakes. Uh -huh. We know better. My mama used to say, I'm finna whoop you, but you know why you're getting it, because you knew better. I still got a butt whooping. Okay? Understand this. You know better, but yet you allow yourself to fall back into an adolescent state when you lose your temper and you let four-letter words come out like they're fish fries. You know what I'm talking about. Thank you. Tracking. We'll tell Pastor Melissa later. <laughs> understand that, guys. You've got to stop at a point where you've gotten to a point where you understand your destiny. And do you understand that Satan can use your mouth to give himself praise by using your tongue? Yes. Amen. You, you use your mouth to destroy, turn down, cut up, make somebody feel bad, and they may have deserved it. They may have deserved for you to go off, but there comes a point in your life where a spiritual maturity has risen up, where you used to act like a toddler, now you have caught in your tongue, and you said, there used to be a time when you ate my last cupcake, I would have tore you up. <laughs> but you know what, I'm gonna bless you right now. I'm gonna bless you, I'm gonna bless you, and I'm gonna forgive you. See what I'm saying? Y'all see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you've got to come to a point where there's a maturity that comes over you where you no longer allow the devil to use your tongue Amen. to give him praise. Amen? Amen. Amen. Alright, so what happens in verse then, uh, verse 22? Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. Peter begins to take Jesus. When Jesus tells him, I'm going to die for you, because I have to die that you can be forgiven. I have to die that the world can have salvation. I have to give my life that I can take back the keys that Satan had given because of Adam, Grandpa Adam. I've got to die. Peter says, uh-uh. That ain't the way I want you to do it. That, no, 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 no. Yes, I like this. I'm a groupie. Jesus, can you imagine? I remember Pastor Melissa used to 
love Rod Stewart back in the day. Rod Stewart! Rod! Rod Stewart! And I met Rod Stewart. I met Rod Stewart. Eddie Van Halen? Y'all remember Van Halen? See, y'all don't remember. Google it later. But I know some of you remember. Eddie Van Halen? I helped him to his room while he had a bottle of Jack in his hand. I was, his bouncer was on one arm. I was on the other. I was a bellman. I met all those guys. The groupies. Oh, my. The groupies that will follow these guys. Uh, Rod Stewart had his, his bodyguard was so tall and so ripped, he had his own set of groupies. He couldn't sing a lick. They followed him. You gotta understand, Jesus was messing up the system. He messed up the system. Jesus didn't need to be in the temple. He would preach in a field. Yeah. They didn't have no AC out in the field. Jesus was messing up the system, and the disciples were looking around. Yeah, we were Jesus. Yeah, yeah. 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 We know Jesus. We know him. We call him tight. That's my man. That's my man, Jesus. They, they hey, hey, we don't want this to end. We were fishermen. Jesus messed up the system, and when Jesus told Peter, "I'm going to die." I'm going to die. I'm going to die for you. Because <laughs> I like the way things are. What did Jesus do? What did he do? Verse 23. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. Whoa! You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. You're thinking as men think, not as God thinks. God's ways are higher than your ways. You wonder why you're in certain situations? Because you thought as men think and you didn't acknowledge God before you made a decision. How I know? Because we have lived it. We have made decisions based on our emotions and not on faith. And then we blame God when it didn't work. Hmm? Amen? Amen? Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man come after me, let him deny himself Take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life will what? Lose it. And whosoever will lose his life will find it. This is so perfect. Verse number 20. I mean, I'm sorry. 26. 26. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Verse 27. For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. works. Verse 28. Assuredly, I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. In verse number 19, I'm going to read this one more time. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And what thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. He gave him the knowledge to give to us the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And when he got it, immediately the enemy knew that was power yeah. and tried to yep. stop it. Yep. Okay, uh, turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, just go over a bunch, a couple of books. Jesus told Pilate when he was brought before Pilate and Pilate was questioning Jesus and Pilate was astonished as the Pharisees and Sadducees accused Jesus of heresy and blasphemy. We know that, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Pilate was astonished and, and finally he asked Jesus, he says, do you not hear what they say about you? Aren't you going to defend yourself? And Jesus answered him nothing. And then Pilate got upset because Jesus wouldn't even answer him. That's a lesson to learn. Sometimes you make somebody look really stupid when they're just running their mouth and you say nothing. That is very hard for me because if I'm angry, I want Pastor Melissa to talk back. She can go silent treatment. Whew, she's good at it. Just say nothing. Oh, that drives me nuts. Whew, thank you, help me, Lord. I'm working on me. Okay. But that is wise though. 
It's wise to take some maturity not to defend yourself when you can just let somebody talk and you just turn and just walk out because and say to them, I don't want to allow the devil to use my mouth like he's using yours. Mm -hmm. Ooh, boom! Mm -hmm. Pick your face up. <laughs> Drop the mic. <laughs> Y'all know that was good. Tweet that. Okay. All right. All right. Just play. Just play. <laughs> Do y'all see Joe? Joe's been up here with me on Thursdays. He's doing an awesome job. Praise the Lord. Jerry's and, and, and Doug are just getting here and getting early and setting the camera up. And Joseph went from the camera to the front table. Look at him. All right. Amen. Teacher's Praise pet. God. Amen. <laughs> Teacher's pet. <laughs> amen. All right. Matthew chapter 4. Are you there? Amen. Uh, I want you to jump over to verse number uh, 14. We're going to read 14, 14 through 17. Uh, okay, yes. Oh, I did circle that. I'm sorry. James, turn in verse 10. Verse 10. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan. For it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Okay, background. Y'all know that Jesus was tempted by the devil after he had fasted 40 days. Okay? Amen? His last one, Satan tempted him. One last time, Jesus said, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. Remember, what does the devil want you to do? He wants you to worship him. Yeah. He wants you to worship him. Verse number 11. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Amen. Verse 12. Now when Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he departed to Galilee. Underline that, when John had been put into prison. Okay, go on. Verse 13. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is by the sea, in the regions of Zebulun and Nath he said it because Naphtali. Yeah, there you go. Say it fast. Verse 14. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Verse 16. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great, a great light, and upon those who sat in the region in the shadow of death, light is gone. Mm -hmm. That's very powerful. The people which sat in darkness saw a great light them which sat in the region shadow of death light has sprung up jesus came into the world to take men out of darkness to take and isaiah prophesied of this this is a prophetic pro prophecy verse 17 my key verse from that time jesus began a reason to say Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, for what? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is upon you. The opportunity to go from light to dark is now. Guys, as we teach. Dark to light. Dark to light. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> dark to light. Amen. And we can do that in this church. Amen. Listen, understand this. You have to constantly remind yourself of the prize. We have to constantly remind ourselves of what we are fighting for. You know, understand that sometimes, some fights, you know, it says, you know, we've heard that phrase, pick your battles. Yes. <laughs> that ain't even worth it. That, you know, just let that go. Who cares? Yeah. You know, I try to tell people certain things that happen to me at work. Man, I don't care. I have a bus to drive. I drive it. There are certain buses that we all like different. You know, there's certain ones that ride really good. Some are very hot. Some are calm. I'm at a point now, I don't care. Give me a coach, give me a hook up me a team of horses, and I'm gonna I, I'm gonna ride it. You know, they they hey. I mean, cause you know I used to get upset. I used to get upset. You know, and it can ruin your day if you got a flat nose because they're flat and the engine is set right there. And man, in the summer, it's already 104 degrees, and until the sun goes down, you're like a you're like a rotisserie chicken in that bus. And I'm telling you, one thing I love about it, I can set my food on that manifold, it's like it came out of the oven. It, it's, I kid you not. But you know what? We have to use those buses because there's only so many buses for so many drivers. So it's like uh, Audrey does a really good job of rotating, but when you get one of those buses, the first thing you want to do is go. <sighs> but not in front of her. <laughs> and inside you're going, <sighs> but I don't do it for her. But I used to you get upset. And God's like, why are you why are you getting upset? What are you gonna go in and tell him I don't want to drive, uh, go home? <laughs> uh, no. Why are you getting upset? Remember, pick your battles, right? 
Yep. Listen, this is a battle you need to pick. This is a battle you need to win. Yep. There are certain things you've gotten yourself entangled with. It's all it's just a distraction. Yeah. You you've gotten yourself involved with people and things and situations that don't even matter. And all they're doing is draining you. Draining. They're draining you. It's a waste of your time. You're in a battle that you don't need to be in, and you need to be focused on completing this one. Because the objective is reaching the kingdom of heaven and making sure you got some people you brought with you. Amen? Amen. Jesus said in verse 17, he says, from that time, Jesus began to preach and say, repent. In other words, change your mind and change your direction. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Remember I told you guys to look down. He says at he heard that John the Baptist had went to prison, right? Remember how John got here. We understand. Let's go over there. Uh, I want you to go to Matthew chapter 11. Go to Matthew chapter 11. Let's go back. Forward. Forward. Are you hearing something? Amen. Amen. I'm excited about this series. Uh, I am. Uh, there's so much to it. Uh, Matthew chapter 11 and we're only going to read right now uh, I'm going to read the first three verses Jaden Matthew chapter 11 and 1, 2, and 3 and 4 and 4 First one Now it came to pass when Jesus finished commanding his 12 disciples that he departed from there to teach and to preach in their cities mm -hmm. Verse 2 And when John had heard and heard about the works of Christ he sent two of his disciples three, and said to him are you the coming one, or do we live for another? Verse 4. Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things which you hear and see. Amen. Think about that. John. Why? Why? John. John. John prophesied, right? Mm -hmm. That he heard the voice, and yet he's in prison. And now he's in prison. And he asks, because there's times that all of us need to be encouraged. Yeah, he, he, he needed, I mean, I mean, you gotta understand that when we talk about being a family, it ain't just about using each other, you know, me coming over to Joe's house every day and you know, Joe, you know, you're my brother, you gotta feed me. That's, that's, that, that's not love, that's use. You know what I mean? That's not family, okay? But family is, you pray for me. Doug calls me all the time, he does. And, 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 and I love it because Doug is not a long conversationalist. I like that. When he calls me, he goes, brother, I just want to see how you're doing, brother. I'm doing good, Doug. He says, I just want to let you know I'm praying for you, brother. Are you doing all right? I love that. I love that. If I got something to say, then he'll talk to me until I get done. But the main thing, he just says, man, I just call to tell you I love you. Guys, we truly sometimes just need somebody to encourage us. Amen. You know, just let somebody know you care. Amen. You know, you ain't got to talk to them all day. Just pick up the phone and say, hey, I just want to tell you I love you. You okay? Amen. Yeah, I'm okay. Okay, good. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> we gotta try to make that because sometimes we try to make conversation and then it gets stupid. You know? Then it gets just stupid. You know? I just get stupid. Just say hey, I love you and hey, bye. Alright. Look, uh, look at that. John needed encouragement. Now I want you to see this because that's tough for John the Baptist who was prophesied over. Go over to Luke, because I'm gonna kinda go back because I'm gonna go and give you some more scriptures. But just go to Luke, just as a reminder, but we can find out who John is. Go to Luke chapter one. Go back to Luke. Go to Luke. Luke chapter 1. And I just want you guys to just remember who John is. And just remember, he was filled with the Holy Spirit in his mother's womb. Uh, go to Luke chapter 1, 10 through 17, uh, Jaden. Luke chapter 1. And I want you to read 10 through 17. Verse 10. And the whole multitude of the people was praying outside at the hour of incense. Okay, guess you know that this is Zacharias, because if the people that are watching online, my church knows this scripture. And and but if you read one, Zacharias was a he was a uh, he was a, a prophet. He was one of the people of God that worked the church and it was his opportunity to serve in the church, okay? And he was burning incense. I don't want to read all that, so carry on. Verse 11. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Verse Amen. 12. 
And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. Hey man, that's a normal reaction, guys. If you're in a closed room, you know, sometimes we freak out. Why did he freak out? He saw an angel. Guess what? I guarantee if I walked in there and you didn't think anybody else was in the house, I just walked up behind you first thing, you're going to go, ah, bah! Okay? I ain't trying to scare you. All right? You know what I'm saying? Because that, that's a normal reaction. I, three times Pastor Melissa did that to me yesterday. I'm in the closet folding clothes, and it's quiet in there because I like folding clothes. That's my therapy. I like making beds. I, mean, I, I wish I husband made bed. I like making beds. That's my therapy. And so I'll be making it, and I'm just quiet. I'm just kind of praying. All of a sudden, I turn around, bam, she's there, like, whoa! It's like, understand that it's not that she was trying to scare me, because we know we don't do that to each other, because people get punched. But we, we, but it just startled me. So think of Zacharias, Michael. Think of him in this room. Nobody is in there. Because matter of fact, when you went into the temple, they tied a thing around your ankle. Okay, because if you went in there and you hadn't prepared to burn incense before God and you went in an unworthy manner, mm -hmm. you dropped dead. Yep. And, and they couldn't just come in there and get you because they weren't allowed to touch a dead body. Okay, so they had to pull your dead butt out because <laughs> you went in the temple and you did not respect God. Can you imagine? That would be something, boy, church would shrink. If you came in here, uh, oh, I'm, so I'm just playing. I'm gonna drop But that would be messed up. People come in here just playing God, playing church. And pow! We got to pull you out. All right. Amen. Think about it though. So, Zacharias all of a sudden turns, there's an angel, yes? yes. All right. Oh, whoa. You know, so, and then, but the angel comforts him immediately. He tells him what? Fear not, Zacharias, right? Are you there? Yes, amen. Okay, Jaden, go ahead. Verse 13. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. Right. Verse 15. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. Amen. Verse 16. You know, this is a message for life. I, and we talked about this last week. Even before Elizabeth was pregnant, God knew him. Gabe knew him before he was in the womb. Now, can you imagine had he been in the womb? God knows. The Bible says you are beautifully and wonderfully made. And the Bible says, woe to those who shed innocent blood. Zacharias, son, before he was in his mother's womb was prophesied. How many... John's, how many Zacharias, how many great leaders have people killed before they were able to come forth out of the womb and yet they pick it. Amen. All right. So, and he shall be filled with, his, with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. You know, people say that we have a right. Let me go. I'm, I'm going to get on this. Yes, Lord. I don't really care. I understand this. The Bible says, I set before you life and death. Just God says that. He says, I set before you life and death, blessings and cursing. He says, but choose life. You have a right to choose life or death, but you have no right if you choose wrong to say it's okay. Because the Bible is very clear. Thou should not kill. It tells you to choose life. So, you know, well, I believe that everybody has a choice. You're right, we do. Adam had a choice. He messed his up. Amen. That's why we're in the state. You do have a choice. But you better understand that even though you agree that you have a choice, your choice goes against God. All right. Amen. All right. That's me. Um, all right. So, it says, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. He shall not drink uh, neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. Verse 16. Verse 16. He will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. Verse 17. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Amen. So we know he had a mission. Yes. 
and we know that he was prophesied in his mother's room. Now, we know that he got kind of, um, he got discouraged. You know, he, this man was prophesied. Now go over to Matthew chapter 3. I want to show you something. This is what started. Matthew chapter 3 might be my last scripture. Matthew chapter 3, go back. Are you there? Amen. Matthew chapter 3. Now, remember, he asked Jesus, he, he asked Jesus' disciples, or John's disciples asked Jesus, remember? He says, are you the Christ or should we look for another? Remember? While he was in prison, that was Matthew chapter uh, 11. Remember? Matthew chapter 11, verse 3. He says, are you the one or should we look for another? Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, listen, that's why I tell you guys, you got to meditate on the word. Because what happens is you begin to question your salvation. You begin to question your, am I saved? Am I okay? Because you can get into mental prisons. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily a physical prison, right? right? Because we talk about mental prisons and sometimes people go into mental prisons where they have locked themselves up. Mm -hmm. And then they begin to question th their identity. And believers, does God really love me? Does he really care about me? If, if God really loved me, why am I going through this? Why do I have to deal with this? Why do I have to be this? Why did this happen to me? You know, and we go into a mental prison, and when we go into a mental prison, we begin not to med on, meditate on the things that are good or, or, or lovely. We meditate on the things that are negative that are destructive. And all that does is make us go into a deeper prison. You know that they have prisons and then they have a- Inner prison. Yeah, and go, you know, solitary can find me. You, you know, and you can go into that in a mental state. So John had actually begin to question, even though he knew. Now look at this. How do you know that, Pastor? Matthew chapter three, it's gonna be our last verse, three through 17. I mean, three. Uh, Matthew chapter 3, 1 through 17. Yeah. Matthew seven. chapter 3, 1 through 17. Verse 1. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Verse 2. And saying, For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Underline that word, kingdom of heaven, because I'm going to be showing that to you guys a lot of times in this series. Okay? Verse, For the kingdom of heaven is what? At hand. At hand, near you. Go ahead. Verse 3. For this is. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Mm. Verse 4. Now John himself was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locust and walnut. Verse 5. Then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the region around the Jordan went out to him. Verse 6. And were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. Amen. Repenting. Amen. Verse 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Pharisees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Bruin vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Verse 8. Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. Verse 9. And do not need to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. That's pretty powerful. Here you have the most powerful people the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religious leaders of that day, and John is baptizing, he preaching, he stopped in a minute, he said, brew the vipers. Yeah. Who, who, who do you think you are? Bring you, come, bring in fruits worthy of repentance. Don't just say because you have Abraham. That's what that, that was their excuse. Abraham is our father. John did not play. Listen, boldness comes against, listen guys, when I tell you guys about praying in your car, praying in the shower, praying, praying, the Bible says pray without ceasing, okay? It brings a confidence in you where you are able to call somebody out that you know that's not right, that's acting like they're holy, and yet you just call them out. Look, at, look, I ain't trying to judge you, but you're a brood of a viper. <laughs> just straight up tell them. John told them. John told, Jesus called them. John, Jesus told him, how can you escape the fires of hell? He, Jesus straight up told him, Satan is your father. Ooh, yes. Find that in John chapter 8. Listen, guys, I'm not telling you to make enemies. 
I'm not pastor, you tell them that's going to be like fool. No, I'm telling y'all to have confidence in what you believe. You don't have to act a fool. People do not see you saying. They don't see you saying. What do you mean, pastor? The Bible says you are peculiar. You're already peculiar, weird to them. So trust me, you are going to bring some people into the light of the kingdom of God and you're going to irritate the heck mm -hmm. out of some people. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Brood of vipers. Okay, go ahead, Jaden. Verse 10. Verse 10. Even now, even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into fire. Okay, right, uh, I like that because I'm going to be dealing with that through several scriptures. Cast into the fire. Verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. Mm. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Mm. Verse 12. His winnowing fan in, is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean up his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. There's that word again, the chaff with unquenchable fire. There are religions that teach that we're in hell right now. This ain't hell. No. <laughs> Trust me. Y'all sitting here breathing and ain't screaming. This ain't no hell. I don't care how hot it was yesterday. It was 104. That ain't hell. <laughs> okay. Uh, next verse. Verse 13. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. Verse 14. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And are you coming to me? Mm. Verse 15. But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Oh, hallelujah. And he allowed him. Amen. Now, this is my key verse. Keep going. Verse 16. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. Mm -hmm. Verse 17. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. A voice came from heaven. John heard that voice. Amen. John sent people to Jesus and said, are you the Christ or should we look for another? Because John had slipped just for a moment into mental prison because he had already heard the voice. Now, if John the Baptist, who had done many things, amen, and was willing to call out Herod mm -hmm. yep. could slip into that's why the Bible tells you to guard your heart amen amen, amen. amen. this series I'm going to be on for a while because amen. I didn't get to maybe 10% of the scriptures I love it though amen. you get the point where we're going the kingdom of heaven amen. there's two kingdoms there's the kingdom of heaven kingdom. and then there's the kingdom of darkness mm -hmm. the kingdom of heaven is without I can't explain it. I have not seen nor ear heard the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Yes. The kingdom of heaven is where we get resurrected bodies. Amen? Amen. The kingdom of darkness is where the fire is not quenched. The Bible says where the worm never dies. The Bible says that there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. We know that in Luke chapter 16 when the rich man died, he remembered his life on earth. And you will remember all the opportunities when he says the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The rich man, the kingdom of heaven was at hand and he ignored it. So guys, understand, truly, there's scientific and biblical proof that when people die, they've had the opportunity to bring them back. And we, we have a VHS tape that if some of y'all know what VHS is. Uh, we have one called, um, uh, uh, what's the name of that? Um, to hell and back. Cause it's called the hell and back. No, it's called the hell and back because it was a doctor who was in emergency room. He brought people back who had died in the emergency room and what they had saw. And understand something, when your eyes close and your heart stops, you're either in heaven or you're in hell. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so I invite all of you that are online, um, we are talking about what God has prepared for you and that the opportunity to get saved is now, to be a part of what God is doing in we are a young church and we are a church that believes God's word and even though we are not many, that we're strong. Mm -hmm. And we believe this, that God has called you to be a part of this 
and that you can not only just be a part, but you can be a part of the things that God is about to do because I believe that we're about to be blessed in ways that none of us imagine. Amen. But we're going to stay focused. If you want to be a part of that and you're not saved, it's a simple prayer. And all you have to do is say, Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus today, today I, make a decision I make a decision to accept you, to accept you as my Lord, as my Lord and, my and my Savior. I ask your forgiveness, ask your forgiveness for, my sins. for my sins. Thank you, Lord Jesus, Thank you, Lord Jesus for what you did for me. Did. Help me, Help me to, walk to walk in your light that I may tell others, I may tell others of, what done for me. of what you've done for me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, Thank you, Lord Jesus for writing my name. In the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen? Amen. 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 God bless you. Listen, um, we can't wait to see all of you this Thursday here for Bible study. And remember, next Sunday, uh, my son, one of my other sons, is going to preach. Uh, Alex Murphy, and I call him Pastor Murphy because I'm calling those things that be not as though they were. Amen. And uh, he's going to bring the word. So, amen. Let's stand. Believe God. Do you believe God? Yes. Do you believe God's called you? Yes. Do you believe God loves you? Yes. Amen. Do you believe you have the victory? Yes. Amen. So put your hands on your heart. Say it like you mean. Create in me. Create in me. A clean heart. A clean heart. And renew. And renew. A right spirit. A right spirit. Within me. Within me. Let the words of my mouth. Let the words of my mouth. And the meditation of my heart. And the meditation of my heart. Always be acceptable in your sight. Always be acceptable in your sight. You are my strength. You are my strength. And my redeemer. And my redeemer. I am the head. I am the head. Not the tail. Not the tail. I am the blessed. I am the blessed. Not